Welcome to the Real Estate Investing Morning Show with your hosts, Wayne and Gabby. Boy. Good morning. You read it right, folks. Today, we're going to be talking about the Calgary real estate market. And it's actually, yeah, actually, that's, that's pretty much all we're going to be talking about. Oh, hey, uh, no, wait. Bank of Canada uh, rate announcement today. That's coming as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and That'll- as if history um, uh, continues to keep repeating itself, it will be announced approximately three minutes after we end the show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so every day we're always like, should we just hold out for a longer episode and be the ones to break the news first? But um, I, be- never- I believe the last announcement, it was like an hour later. It didn't follow us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to talk about... Um, uh, projections. Uh, we got the big five banks making projections and what they think is going to happen. So we're going to talk about what they think as well. Uh, like we said, we're going to be talking with Nathering, Le- Nathering Legere, investor focused realtor in Calgary. Um, the other big topic that uh, she's bringing with her is the new secondary suite incentive program, mm-hmm. which we're very excited about. There's new incentives for for those investors who want to add secondary suites uh, to their basements in Calgary. So uh, that's coming up. What's the weather looking like in Edmonton there, Everly? The weather today in Edmonton will be 19 degrees and sunny. 19 degrees and sunny. <laughs> Thanks, Evie. Oh, man. That's, so, that's, a, that's a perfect day. Not quite. Would you consider that a perfect day? Mm, like 17, 18. Mm. I'll, I'll take 19. I don't know. I feel like because of all of the heat waves we had this summer, like we had more than normal. It was a hotter summer, I feel like, than normal. Uh, it like was the, the tw- hottest the, summer. The 20s don't feel that like hot to me anymore. Like our regular like 24 is kind of like, eh, yeah, it's not that bad. So 19 to me right now feels like a perfect day. I mean, that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> it is. It is my opinion, You're man. entitled to it. <laughs> I am. Let's talk about the immense pressure that our nine-year-old is under every morning <laughs> like can, did could you guys imagine doing weather for like one of the top real estate podcasts in canada that's i think we're pushing her too hard <laughs> i think that we should really have a sit down as parents we should really reconsider this we're putting too much stress in this kid and it might affect her potential she loves to do it I did. I did not wake her up this morning, and I guess I was a little bit too loud making coffee, and she stumbled down right before I came down, and she's like, "You didn't wake me up." <laughs> well, I mean, all right, we'll let her keep doing it then, I guess. Um, anything new in your world? Um, not too much is new. Um, we had a really good uh, first of month. You know, like on Sorry? The, I, I had a we had a really good first uh, first of the month. So as you know, as as landlords, first of the month is, you know, payday. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. And it was notably a really great month. Um, it was like really smooth. Everybody got paid. Everybody paid. It was um, it was it was a really good first of the month. We had one tenant who didn't. And I was like, uh oh. And I didn't, I didn't actually do my first of the month on the first. I waited until the second because it was like over the long weekend and, you know, I was kind of refusing to get to it on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but first thing on Monday, I, I emailed and just said, hey, uh, we didn't get your rent. Send it like now to avoid any further. Did you send like a wrench emoji? <laughs> no, but I said, send it now to avoid any further action. And within like half an hour, it was sent. So I don't think it was malicious. I think she just literally forgot. It was a long weekend. I usually have a little bit of grace for long weekends. Like, not like, oh, we'll give you a break. But like, I don't think they were trying to pull one on me type of mm-hmm. situation. So uh, yeah, so wrapped up first of the month, nice and nice and tidily on first thing on the second. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. That's great. I'd love to know uh, all of our listeners. I'd love to know if you guys got all your rent on time. Uh, any of you guys not get any rent? Um, I feel like that's the smoothest it's went in a while. I feel like we've had like a little bit of turmoil over the past few months with all the like tenant changeover. We had the one tenant who was, well, two tenants that were kind of like. Stinkers. Yeah. Causing some some stuff. And yeah, it was just nice to, you know, it felt like a fresh start for September. We're all tenanted. 
Maybe we can like continue that wave all the way through winter. That'd be amazing. Ugh. I'd love that. Summer's always the busiest for landlords. That's when all the turnover happens and all the n- renewals happen. And winter tends to just be a little bit more quiet until like the holiday season. And then people overspend and they're like, oh, I had to get Timmy a new toy truck. I had to decide between the roof over my head and presents under the tree. Oh, God. Sorry. Blech. Sorry. <laughs> It's just like never a situation you want to be in. You know what I mean? Anyways, um, now I sound like a slumlord. Now I sound like Ebenezer. (laughs) Rent is due. Um, Okay, well, I'm glad to hear that you've got like a really good thing going on right now. Nothing crazy at all? No, nothing really crazy. We're doing some... How about... Okay, I just want to tell a story. How about the tenant that called... Okay tenant that called with the plumbing issue oh yeah, yeah so yeah. we have one property that's had serious sewer backup issues for the last five years um four well, years i wouldn't i wouldn't call it serious for the last four years but like there's been the some issues. call outs yeah there's been some issues yeah um which resulted in some serious issues so at first it was just we had a sewer backup like once or twice, but the line got cleared and, oh, everything's fine. It's good. And um, that was over the last four years. And then last summer, um, finally, the uh, we called out a different company and they did like a further scope. I don't know if they went further into the line or what, but or if it had just kind of like escalated. But, um, you know, oh, sorry, guys, uh, you're going to need a whole new whole new uh, sewer line. <laughs> Yeah, and we're it's on your side, up, not the city side. Yeah, we're going to dig up your yard and replace your sewer line. And take down that tree. And take down that big ass tree in the front yard. And here's your quote. I think all in, it was 17000 I thought it was over twenty. I think you're confusing. We did some work in the backyard as well. That was all roped 000? in. Yeah, yeah. 17000 Yeah. For that new sewer line? Yeah. Um, so everybody, that, everybody take a moment of silence for that one. <laughs> <laughs> that is, um, that's the kind of like worst, worst, it is the worst thing that can happen. The worst thing property. that can happen on a rental property. Mm, the most foundation, expensive thing. Foundation. Okay. Second worst. Okay. Yeah. If your foundation is crumbling, then you have a bigger problem. Yeah. But yeah. Second worst. It's a really big expense. Um, thankfully we run a great business and weren't even faced. <laughs> we weren't even, oh, I mean, I was, it hurt. I was faced. It well, hurt. yeah, it, it might, yeah, it hurt. It, it's still a kick in the groin. Yeah. But it only hurts for a little bit. But we were financially stable and able to accommodate that expense. Financially expenses. stable and able. <laughs> but anyways, um, so yeah, we've had lots of, lots of, uh, plumbing stuff. So we've spent property. a lot of money at this property yeah. on, on, on this sewer line. And then so we get an email from a tenant that says, hey, the tub is backed up and it's not draining. Well, he didn't say backed up. He said it was, it was it, the, the tub is clogged. It won't, it won't oh, okay. drain. Okay. Um, he said it's been slow to drain and now it's stopped. It's abs- it's 100% clogged. It will not drain. And we thought, shoot. Um, because yeah, like we just had the sewer line in place. Like what could be causing it to not drain like you know worried so we send the same company out and um she gets there and she's like does the tenant have long hair nope okay does the tenant have a dog with long hair what is it are we playing (laughs) guess who uh yeah 20 questions (laughs) Okay, your tenant has been bathing their dog in the tub, and there is a large amount of dog hair um, in the drain uh, that uh, goes beyond me being able to just like reach down and pull it out. So we're gonna have to need to get a snake in there and like really unclog it. But uh, I think that should be the issue, and uh, just give me a little bit of time here, and we'll confirm that. Okay, and yeah, she pulled out like mass amounts of dog hair, and uh, that, my friends, was a I just want you guys to know that, like, you think, oh, it's just a little bit of dog hair in the sewer, in the drain. It's it's not that, it's not going to be that expensive. I swear to God, I have not had a bill for our rental property invoice that's been less than $150 in a very long time. 
like everything is at least $150. So this one is is definitely it was another kick in the in the crotch. This one was 296. <laughs> so your dog hair. Yeah, I'll also state that we um do not use the cheapest um plumber in the city, but that goes in line with all of our trades. We do not use the cheapest trades in the city. We use the best trades in the city. We also called the specialized trade that did the sewer line because yeah. we thought it was a warranty issue. Yeah. So by calling them out to diagnose it and then paying for a diagnosis and then calling another cheaper plumber in, it would have probably cost yeah, more. Exactly. So I considered it <laughs> when yeah. she showed, when she showed me the quote, I was like, Oh, I bet you I could just Get somebody in, do a quick little snake. And Gabby was like up. taking apart a coat hanger real fast. She's like, I yeah. can do this myself. <laughs> but once I considered that I was already going to be paying the call out fee, I was like, yeah, not worth it. Mm -hmm. Get at her. So obviously this isn't our fault though. Tenant calls us in telling us that the sewer line or the, 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 the drain is clogged. You know, assuming it's our fault, we call out the plumber to get it fixed. But this is one of those situations where uh, it wasn't our fault. Mm -hmm. And the the actual the onus the the responsibility actually falls on the tenant for this one. So, do you want to just really quickly talk about the whole process for that and how you dealt with that? Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, an email was sent to the tenant uh, just stating that you know the as requested, we uh, called out a plumber. Um, they were there on Friday, and um, upon you know investigating the issue, they found a large amount of dog hair in the drain. Um, after they scoped everything out, she uh, filled and drained the tub a couple times and there is no longer any issues um, because this um, was an issue on your part. Um, you will be responsible for paying the bill. I've attached it to this um, email. Please send an e-transfer as soon as you're able. Yeah. Yeah. Um, has, has he, he sent it yet? No, he has not. Has he responded? No, he has not. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, stay tuned on that one. Yeah. We'll, we'll let you know how that goes. Um, it's fine. If he doesn't, we just save the um, invoice into his statement of account and it comes off of his security deposit at the end. Um, the so, end the yeah, we don't really care whether he sends it or whether he doesn't. It just is what it is. He's responsible for it at the end of the day and we'll make He's that. He's going to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to pay for it at some point. Um, now Wayne I, has the wrench. Now we send the <laughs> rent emoji. Um <laughs> No, he's going to, like, it's his responsibility. So whether uh, it would be ideal if he sends it right now, if mm -hmm. he doesn't, um, it's not in his best interest for a long, for the long-term relationship of this landlord and tenants um, uh, relationship. Because by ignoring us, he's basically, you know, disagreeing. And, you know, if he's not going to pay for things that he's responsible for, and he's going to make it difficult, and we're going to have to go down this path. There's a strong possibility he's not going to be getting a renewal uh, at the end of uh, at the end of his lease, and I can tell you right now, uh, our current rent is significantly less than market rent. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, rents are just going to keep on going up, so it's in everybody's best interest to do what you're you know do what you're supposed to do and um, be responsible. But we'll see. He might just be busy. Yeah, or he might just not have the cash on him right now, and he's just trying to delay it a little bit, but. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a good lesson for you guys just to know that, you know, if something is damaged or something is caused that is not your responsibility that was caused by the tenants, it's the tenant's responsibility. And there's a process for doing it correctly to make sure that you get the money that's owed. Um, and, um, and yeah, worst case scenario, if they don't, then it just gets taken from the security deposit at the end. Yeah. Right. Or you take them, you know, file a claim at the landlord tenant board later on. Yes. Yeah. But um, we will get what is owed to us. Yeah. Right. And first step is understanding. Mm -hmm. Give me 15 seconds to answer uh, Nat's question. She asked if we told him to no longer wash the dog in the tub. Um, no. Um, of course, he can continue to wash the dog in the tub. But what we did do is we provided. Yeah, I actually came up with a really solid solution for that, by the way. And I got to applaud you for it. Not, on, not in the microphone, but I'll just. Just soft clap you, <laughs> golf clap you. Yeah. So actually, um, I very rarely uh, go to our properties, but um, it was it was kind of like an emergency. I didn't have time to arrange somebody to go meet the um, plumber, so I went, and um, I was waiting for her to to scope it. So I just popped up to a Rona and grabbed a um, tub drain catcher. It's actually called a, a drain hair catcher. Yeah. And um, I left it there for him. And so in that email that I sent, I also said we've provided 
a drain catcher, um, use as needed. So if you're washing the dog, just plop it into the into the drain so that it'll catch the hair and there shouldn't be any issues moving forward. So that's how we handled that. You didn't have to, but you did. Yep. And it showed good faith. Yeah. And just that's, that was the right way to handle it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to take a quick little break here. When we come back, we're going to be talking about what the big five banks are projecting for the Bank of Canada rate announcement today. And as well, Natherine Legere, investor-focused realtor in Calgary, is going to be joining us talking about the... Mm -hmm. Talk about the Calgary market, what's going on, and also the new secondary suite intensive program in Calgary. We will be right back. Attention real estate investors. Canada's top speakers in real estate have collaborated for Edmonton's biggest real estate investing event of the year. Are you ready to take your investing game to the next level? Join us at REICon on September 21st and 22nd. You'll learn from the nation's top investors, build your power team, and gain the confidence to make smarter investment decisions. Don't miss this opportunity to network with industry leaders, fellow investors. Secure your spot now at reiconference.ca. Are you just starting to build your real estate portfolio? At Kirkwood & Brennan, we are real estate investors and mortgage brokers who understand real estate investing. Not only do we help you get a mortgage, but we help you build a better real estate portfolio. Check us out at kbmortgages.ca or call 778-847-0552. Take the time now so you have more time later. Okay. How about that? Uh, Alan Wu just entered the studio. Good morning, Alan. Good morning to Alan. How you doing? Good, yeah. yeah. How you doing, Alan? Have it's you like, had your coffee yet? How I was you doing? Like, Why are they talking about me? I just got here. <laughs> Good morning to everybody else as well. Um, okay. Let's get into this because um, this is going to be the, uh, the big thing that everybody's going to be talking about this morning um, is the, the Bank of Canada rate announcement. Um, we've all been waiting for it close to a month, maybe more. And uh, we're all curious as to what's going to happen. Inflation dropped quite significantly, as we know. Um, and that is normally one of the big determining factors when it comes to determining mm -hmm. whether there's going to be a rate cut. Um, and I would say that most experts are now saying that it is most certain that there will be Mm -hmm. a rate cut today. I think everybody agrees there's going to be a rate cut. Now the discussion is, and I think everybody agrees also that there is going to be continuous rate cuts um, because they, they have a target that they're trying to hit by the end of the year. Uh, and then even more so into 2025 as well. So they are anticipating rate cuts through the end of, into, into the end of the year. Now for today though, because it is almost certain, the big discussion that's being had is, is it going to be 25 basis points or is it going to be 50, 50 basis points? That's dun, dun, dun. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't watching the, the mixer. I'm just curious how. Did I blow your eardrums? Just wanted to know if, yeah, I didn't see. <laughs> well, I'll check that later on. Um, that is the suspenseful, uh, that is, that is big suspense. Everybody wants to know whether this is going to be um a 25 point or basis points or it's going to be 50. what do you think wayne uh i do i look like i'm qualified to answer no that just question? i it's not it's i didn't say what's it going to be i said what do you think what do i think 25. me too that's what i think i think so too i think that um what do you guys think listeners my buddy tiff get your projections in uh, Tiff McClellan, uh is, is going to play it safe because here's the deal there's some other there's some other things that are coming as well and um, okay. How about I just tell you what the, the top five, the big five banks, the economists down, down there at those offices are saying, and then you'll have a better understanding of what we're, where, what I'm getting at here, because, um, there's some mixed opinions on this. Um, and there's some other big news that's going to be coming as well. That's going to determine the rest of the year. Okay. okay so TD, but, but I'm going to have a contest. A with contest? our with our listeners, I want their projections in right now. And out of the answers who are correct, I'm gonna send you a coffee card this morning. I'm buying your coffee. Oh, we did not talk. About this. <laughs> we didn't. I, I want to have some fun. I, Gabby, I won't be able to financially recover from this. I want to have some fun. Okay, so two it, five 
0.25 or 0.5. Get your guesses in. Okay. Hang on a second. What are the rules? I missed it. I was not expecting that. Our listeners just need to tell us what they think. Is it going to be 0.25 or 0.5? And everybody who guesses right once the announcement is made, I'm going to put all your names into a draw. I'm going to pull one and I'm sending you a coffee card. Okay. Okay. So for the live listeners, uh, there's a little incentive to join the live show. (laughs) Okay. You never know when Gabby's going to give shit away. Uh, Apparently. (laughs) I didn't even know. Look, all right. see, I guess something away. Look at all the engagement. Oh my gosh. We woke him up. <laughs> Everybody's falling off the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead. You tell us right, what Tiff TD. says. So economists uh, Bita Currency and James Orlando look at the bigger picture over at TD, uh, saying that the pattern of a 25 basis points per meeting has been established after the events of June and July. And that the current policy rate is 125 to 225 basis points above what they think the economy warrants amid slackened inflation. This means that the Bank of Canada, like the Fed, the U.S. Fed, is slated to keep cutting at every meeting, bringing the policy rate to 3.75 by year end and 2.5% by end of 2025. Okay, so that's their projections and they are projecting or um, they are... Uh, predicting a 25 uh, basis points. Okay, Uh, TD says 0.25. That is correct. Uh, RBC economist Abby Zhu uh, wrote in a commentary that it has come in soft, it has come in soft enough to signal to the Bank of Canada that inflation will continue on a downward trajectory. As such, RBC's expectation is that tomorrow's interest rate announcement will culminate into 25 basis point cut bringing the policy rate down to 4.25. So RBC says 0.25 as well. Scotiabank economist Derek Holt wrote in an economic uh, publication from Friday uh, that a quarter point rate cut tomorrow is widely expected and more than fully priced. And the same goes for the October and December meetings. According to economists with the bank, uh, according to economists with the bank, if delivered, this would take uh, cumulative easing to 125 basis points from a 5% policy rate peak to 3.75 by year end. Okay. CIBC. Uh, so on tomorrow's, uh, so on today's uh, rate announcement, uh, CIBC economist Avery Schenfeld has pointed out that the Bank of Canada will be making its decision before the U.S. Federal Reserve makes its announcement next week. Speaking to the feds, the expectation is for Chairman Jerome Powell to unveil the first cut of the cycle with a 50 basis points cut not out of the question amid slack in the labor market and Powell's dovish tone in recent months. That's that's the U.S. They're expecting the U.S. to make a 50 basis point cut. Uh, But Canada isn't a U.S. copycat when it comes to its rate decisions. And having already provided 50 basis points of relief before any Fed move, it's clearly not following the U.S. lead. If past is prologue, it seems to have a taste for moving 25 basis points at a time. So that's our forecast. CIBC, 25 BPS. Over at BMO, the forecast is with the majority, with economists with the bank anticipating a quarter point cut as well to come out of tomorrow's meeting. However, if Q3, uh, the GDP comes in far below the Bank of Canada's forecasts and the jobless rate continues to forge higher, August data out, uh, sorry, the, the, the data for August for the GDP is going to be coming out um, on Friday um, and, and the unemployment jobless rate. Uh, that could open the door to potentially more aggressive cuts later this year especially if the Fed is also tilting that way in the fall. Um, That's from BMO economist Douglas Porter. In a separate commentary published on the same day, uh, Porter, like Schenfeld, Schenfeld's over at um, uh, CIBC, uh, underlined the role of the U.S. Federal Reserve in the Bank of Canada's future moves, going as far as to say The biggest factor driving a potentially more aggressive series of rate cuts is the changed outlook from the Fed, as much as it would pain the Bank of Canada to admit it. Uh, With markets back to pricing in a series of early and often U.S. rate cuts, frankly, frankly, 
egged on by Chair Powell. That's the, he's the head of the Fed. Uh, this has helped firm the Canadian dollar, thus removing one remaining hurdle for the bank. We are maintaining our call of 100 basis points of cuts by January and then another 50 BPS by mid-2025, taking the overnight rate to 3% by next June, Shenfeld said. Uh, but the risk is clearly that the bank moves even slower and possibly more. After all, if the jobless rate keeps rising and the output gap keeps widening, while inflation is better behaved, why would the bank stop at 3%? Mm. That's our wonder wall, he said. That's our wonder wall. That's, uh, so all five are saying 0.25, 0.25. However, they've been wrong. They've been wrong. It's the safe move. And, you know, Bank of Canada doesn't want to admit it, but uh, once the Fed, the U.S. Fed starts making some moves, it could make things a little bit easier and a little bit more um, safe to follow suit. Yeah. They're kind of going against the grain right now. They like to pretend that they don't, that it's not a big concern, but they, it is a big concern. It's a big consideration. Yeah. So that's that. That's what we're going to find out here very quickly. Um, how many people uh, said, you know what, 0. 0.5? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We have 6.5s and 9.25s. Oh, my God. Yeah. So anybody who just joined in late, I see Sean just uh, joined the room. Uh, make a guess. Are they going to do rate cuts of 0. 0.25 or 0. 0.5? Winners are going to go into a draw and get free coffee today. Damn. Pretty okay. dope. Paul. Paul just added his guess here. Okay, a quick break, and then Nazarene Legere is going to be coming in here, and we're going to be talking about the Calgary market and the new Calgary Secondary Suite Incentive Program. We will be right back. It's time to sell your house, or buy a new one, or an additional one. But where do you start? Do you drive around neighborhoods hoping to spot for sale signs? Do you take a shot in the dark with a real estate listing website? Or do you go with an experienced and focused realtor? Natherine Legere is the licensed expert realtor you've been hoping you would find. Working in Calgary and surrounding areas, whether you're buying, selling, or investing, Natherine will help you bridge the gap between you and your real estate goals. Find Natherine Legere online at houseandhomeyyc.net. Well, 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 investors, you're looking for some lucrative off-market opportunities, but all the good deals seem to have dried up on the MLS. What do you do? You go to Legere Homebuyers, a Calgary premium wholesaling company. That's what you do. Whether you're looking for the next fix and flip, buy and hold, burr project, or redevelopment, you'll find the best off-market deals with Legere Homebuyers. And don't worry, Legere does the work for you. Join the buyers list on calgaryoffmarket.ca and edmontonoffmarket.ca today. You've got showings, lease signings, sweet renos, condo board meetings, credit checks, mortgage financing, and every so often a tenant clogs the sink because they shove macaroni down there. Stop. 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 Breathe. Breathe. Leave the bookkeeping to Fingo. Fingo is specialized real estate bookkeeping by real real estate investors with tailored services for maximum returns. Save time. Enhance your returns. Claim the plumbing repair for that ridiculous macaroni fiasco. Book your free consultation at Fingo.com. And we are back. We're back. I think you got her in. I'm in. Hey, Nat. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Um, busy back to school, so it's been busy with four kids. I was gonna say, uh, your house sounds relatively quiet, all things considered. <laughs> yeah, we Matthew hasn't gotten the kids up yet just because it's gonna be full of chaos, so he's trying to keep them in bed for as long as possible, <laughs> right? This morning, anyway. <laughs> uh, that is life, that is life. Kids make noise, mm -hmm. and um, but uh, we wouldn't have it any other way. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, okay, so. Let's 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 get right into it. Nat, we've been talking so much lately. You know, we just uh, no. we put on put on that awesome <laughs> webinar on Monday, um, talking all about building your power team. For those of you guys that missed it, um, just send us a message. You can email us at info at REI Morning Show, or you can DM us, and uh, we'll get you the link sent for that to get you the YouTube uh, video. Um, that was an amazing webinar, uh, going over how to build your power team in Calgary, and not even 
revealed all of her power team, like her full Rolodex of all the professionals. I think it was like 13 or 14 professionals that you could mm -hmm. use if you're investing in Calgary. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Matthew was a little bit upset, just FYI, because Wholesaler was near the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matt, get over it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Um, but yeah, guys, send us a message if you want the uh, the link for that. Um, let's get into the Calgary market. What's um, yeah. obviously the stats now, right? For July? Yes. No, for August. Oh, for um, August. My yeah. Yeah. So like we kind of said in July that because August is the summer, I feel like these numbers could be just like a little bit skewed. Um, I feel like we'll have a better understanding of what the market's doing like come October when we get September stats. Um, but in August, everything just slowed down. Everything kind of dropped a bit. I wouldn't say it dropped crazy, but it did drop a bit. So in July, we were at 606, 700 for like the benchmark price for everything. And in August, we were at 601, 800. So it dropped about $5,000. Um, and it was like that across the board. Um, relatively where we've seen like about four thousand five thousand dollar drop in all prices um but one thing that we did see was our month of supply went from 1.75 to 2.05 so we're still in a seller's market but like buyers have more inventory so they have more choice um but most of the homes are priced over six hundred thousand so and most buyers are looking for under 600,000, under 500,000, and there's not that much. So that's where we're still seeing like major competition, multiple offers, like anything under that 600,000 range are still going relatively fast. And then obviously the apartment condos are kind of what slowed it down as well because those are sitting on the market a lot longer now as well. Gotcha. Um, and the biggest drops in Calgary are city center, with a uh, almost ten thousand dollar drop, and in the West as well, and those are the ones that also had the biggest numbers for their um, uh, benchmark price. So oh, those right. had like almost a ten thousand dollar drop. And I was like, oh, nice. <laughs> uh, Nat, you would not believe how many people like ever since the stats came out for for August. The amount of people right now that are freaking out, they're like, is Calgary done? Are prices got a tank? Is it, is it all over? And I'm just like, well, calm the hell down. It's August, for God's I sake. Know. <laughs> prices went down $5,000 in the benchmark price. Oh, my God, this guy's falling. It's like, okay, yeah. just calm down. Have you, have, have, you, have you ever looked at August stats before? Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. They always do a, a good drop. Um, and honestly, I think it's great for investors. Like August is such a good month for investors to be out just like scooping up everything. Like if you guys are looking to pull the trigger, August was your month because you could totally come in 15, 20,000, $25,000. Look at those homes that have been sitting on the market for two or three months, right? People who um, listed before Stampede and their house is still sitting now because, you know, people were off, you know, living mm -hmm. their life in the summer. So yeah. it would have been a great time to pick up those properties for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, um, so we're just going to wait and see until how, fall and see how things uh, change, if see how it reacts. Obviously, yeah. you know, and like it, the fall is always is is there's always a little bit of an uptick in fall as as kids mm -hmm. get settled into school and whatnot right yeah and people are more in their getting in their routines and now they're actually sitting down they're looking they're you know back engaging with their realtors they're asking for you know um i have a buyer campaign going right now and like <laughs> yeah buyers are it's getting wild out there yes. <laughs> so they're, they're ready to get back to it Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen uh, several realtors um, here in Edmonton posting about how um, things definitely took a little uh, pick up here in September again, and that, um, you know, where th things were starting to slow down a bit, like I've seen a couple mm -hmm. like sold in 24 hours and like those types of posts. So yeah. um, it seems like, yeah, there's a little bit of oomph back in in the market, but we'll see how long that lasts. Exactly. 
Um, but the secondary suite incentive should help for the investors. Oh God. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And, and you know what, you know, when you brought that up, I, I thought to myself, I remember hearing about it a, a few months ago, but um, the, the website was incomplete. Like it said, you can apply, but then there was no word to apply. And mm -hmm. there were a lot of missing details at that time when they first announced it. I don't even know why they, they put it up on the website when they didn't have it complete yet. All they said that what they just kind of explained what they were going to cover approximately right. how much the, 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 the reimbursement was going to be, but otherwise there wasn't much. And, um, when you told me that, uh, that you want to talk about I'm like oh we should wait until we get all the details and you're like oh yeah it's up so i'm excited to hear about what's going on what the requirements are and how to go about applying uh for for this awesome program yeah so the secondary suite incentive program is in calgary and basically what they're doing is they're trying to help so it's only for a second dwelling in your home okay so it's not for like your backyard or a garage or anything like that it has to be basically you're converting your basement is what's mm. happening okay. um and, and basically what, yeah and basically what they're doing is they're trying to support safe housing so they're not giving you this reimbursement to you know do the secondary suite they're um wanting to make sure you're doing it properly so the the reimbursements are for like the safety elements. Okay. If that makes sense. So it's up to $10,000 for the safety elements, like a safe exit door, the carbon monoxide, your windows that they're egress. So things like that to make it basically like a legal secondary suite and you need these certain safety elements in there. Yes. Um, so that's kind of where they're going to reimburse you a uh, smoke type barrier. And in some instances, they will even reimburse you if you decide to split the heat and have separate air, but it's not required for all. Um, if you yeah. have an older and you're getting it grandfathered in, um, yeah, but they'll even give reimburse you up to $6,000 for that. That's well. that one right there. Split heat, separate air was not on the list when it first came out. Yeah, that's what that one that, that one's new. And yeah. that's so that right there can cover the cost of I'd say a good chunk of the cost of a new furnace and uh, new ducting. Mm -hmm. I mean, the furnace is what about seven grand gab. Yeah. And then yeah. new ducting is going to be maybe an extra thousand, two thousand bucks, something along those lines. So that's a very big chunk of the heat and ventilation costs which I would say arguably is, is one of the most expensive costs mm -hmm. um, when you're putting together a suite like this. Everybody thinks it's like it's the drywall, it's the flooring and stuff like that. Um, the separate, th that is one of the biggest expenditures. Yeah. Um, sure. So that's, that's fantastic. Not to mention, um, you know, you could utilize that more so you can get the separate ventilation and then just do baseboard heaters and it would probably cover the cost. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. that's huge. That's, I'm sorry that caught me off guard. No, that's okay. And there's actually additional funding as well. So if you're looking to go the more accessible route and energy efficient, so if you get, so they, one of the safety elements is egress windows um, mm. and they're willing to pay up to $1,500. And then if you get energy star certified egress windows, they will also pay up to $1,250 for that. Okay. And then if you decide to do anything for accessible space, um, to those with common mobility issues, they're also willing to provide up to $5,000 for that. So like bigger, bigger doors, more space in the area, a ramp, like things like that, or in the shower, bathrooms, things like that, um, for people who have accessibility issues. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That's awesome. I love that added, um, piece there because it's really needed. And, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't realize that if they, put these elements into their rentals, um, they can attract some really long-term solid renters because it's so hard for them to find accessible yeah. units. Um, mm -hmm. So even just the smallest little things, which might not seem like, you know, it might not be a ramp and that everything is like, you can like, uh, you know, everything's accessible with a wheelchair. It might not be that extreme. It could be simple things, um, you know, 
that that fit under that category that can make a huge difference for a lot of people and they'll stay forever because it's so hard to find them right yeah that's what i was thinking too and that's why i wanted to make sure that i mentioned it um mm -hmm. now applying <laughs> So you do, I was telling this to Wayne, I was like, you do have to actually take an e-learning course. Mm -hmm. So what? when you're applying, the, yeah, there's an e-learning course. I don't know if you saw that, I messaged you. So there's actually an e-learning course that is mandatory requirement for for qualifying for the incentive program. Um, it it's basically goes over all of the safety elements that they're going to be applying, like that they're going to be giving you a um, the grant back for. So it talks about egress windows, why they're important, hardwiring, because I kind of went through it. I clicked that I wanted to go through the e-course. And yeah, so it just goes through all of that. And then it, and then you get a certificate at the end and it's that certificate that you have to put with your application. Okay. I like that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, does, it sounds like it's not that big of a deal. They're just giving you information, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, Knowledge is power. Give the people, give the people the knowledge, and yeah, I like it. You want some money? Take the course. Yeah, <laughs> which is yeah, and the course is on the city is on the city website. Yeah, um, and then before you apply, you're going to need your building per permit for the sec for the secondary suite, um, and then you can also see and review that information on the city of Calgary website as well. Um, you want to make sure that you have, um, or if you need to apply, you can also apply apply.calgary.ca. Um, once you have your building permit in hand, like you have it, then you can apply for the incentive program. So I went down because I feel like a lot of people are going to ask, what if I already started? Mm -hmm. You know, like what if I already had it and I already started? So, just came into the chat. Yeah. Seriously? As Someone just asked yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if it's already done, um, you might be able to, but they might not give you as much. Okay. Right. Um, if you just started, uh, basically you can still apply as long as like those main ones that I talked about haven't been done yet, then you can qualify for the full um, reimbursement. Okay. okay. So but it's worth, no matter what stage you're at, it's worth it to just contact them and find out. Yeah, and to apply, yeah at the very least to take a little course and then apply yeah. for it mm -hmm. um and then it was asking so i went down like on there it talks about like um like f and q's like people who are asking questions and one of the questions that came up which was really really good was can my contractor apply so you know how like plumbing permits and things like that like your whoever's doing the work can apply so your contractor cannot apply for you the homeowner must apply so you have to be the home, the owner of this home to apply for this program to get the reimbursement back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's fine. Um, there was another question in the uh, FAQ uh, mm -hmm. that said, uh, can I do the work myself? Yes. I, I'm pretty sure I saw it here. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I said, can I do the work myself? It says, yes, homeowners can apply for their own building permit. You can also apply mm -hmm. for homeowner electrical and plumbing permits, which is normal. Uh, yeah. In your own home, you are allowed to pull permits like that for your, for yourself, which I've always found really odd mm -hmm. that um, they will allow you to pull electrical and plumbing permits to do it yourself in your own home. <laughs> um, well, as long as they're checking it, right? Like to close the permit, they need to come and check your work. They do. Yep. And mm -hmm. I remember I did it once because we were adding a secondary suite in our basement. And I'm just like, I'm going to do this myself. And then you got to submit the drawings. And uh, so I had somebody else do the drawings for me. Um, and I don't know, they weren't a plumber either or an electrician. And I remember going in there and the plum, the guy that was in charge of like the plumbing department or the plumbing um, uh, permits was a huge uh what's the word uh dick <laughs> huge dick he's like so i couldn't help but notice you've got it positioned this way you are aware that you know on a drawing it's supposed to go this way right and i'm like uh yes and and so talk to me about where the venting is going to be for this and i'm just like venting 
terrific question. Uh, <laughs> like I had no idea what I was talking about, but he was drilling me yeah. to find out how competent I was in order to do this, which rightfully slow. So I was not qualified for this. I was just mm -hmm. putting in the permit myself and getting somebody else to do it. Um, just to save a little bit of money and not having them pull the permit of the contractor. But uh, yeah, I've always found it really uh, odd that you can pull your own permits for electrical and plumbing. And uh, the guy at the at the Edmonton Permit Department uh, uh, office was was not easy on me. But guys, if you guys are planning on doing your own home, you do have the ability to pull it yourself. Um, and obviously, just you can also get uh, a professional to do that, uh, do the work. But yeah, it's it's uh, pretty cool. I I I I really like this program. I really like it a lot. I love that they added the e-learning uh, portion as well, of it as well with the course. Mm -hmm. um, like Gabby said, I think that's terrific. Uh, it's all about. I mean, there's there's two major things that they're trying to accomplish here. One is is um, provide more rentals, right? Provide more. Um, units available. Um, and rather than just focusing on investors and focusing on new builds, which, you know, you've seen a, a, a ton of new builds going on in Calgary, yeah. um, mm -hmm. all over the place. It's not, we're not on, on pace yet. We're like, we're not on track to hit the targets by 2032. So they got to come up with some other options. Where do they come up with other options? Well, there are tons of houses that are currently available, that, but they're occupied by homeowners. So we'd love to get some more suites, you know, on those properties, but try and convince a homeowner to build a garage suite or build a secondary suite. It's going to be difficult for them. Mm -hmm. But if you can offer some form of incentive, like, hey, we'll cover $10,000 worth of costs and, you know, we'll just teach you how to be a, you know, we're just covering $10,000 worth of costs. Then it's going to increase the value of your property, right? And you can bring in some extra income. It's going to help with offsetting the increased costs from interest rates. It's a win. Uh, all that we ask is that you also take a landlord course and just understand the safety of secondary suites. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um it's, I think it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant on Calgary's part. Yeah. Um, so it also talks about like when you're going down, like questions, regularly asked questions, it talks about like how long it'll take my application for the incentive to be approved. Obviously, that's really important because people want to know their timelines, right? Um, and it says once approved, like if you're approved, it should take around five to seven business days unless you're missing information or your application wasn't filled in properly. But if everything was done properly, you took the little e-learning course around five to seven business days, which is a really good turnaround time. That's, that is really good. Wow, yeah. that is fast. Yeah. I wonder if it'll stay that way, if they get an influx of, of people applying. <laughs> Probably. True, and even True. with the to to build the backyard suites, somebody asked that question, and they were like, "No, not at this time. It's not included." So I feel like that's leaving the door open for it could potentially down the road be included for backyard suites, where they will right. have an incentive for it. So I think that there's only a certain amount of money allocated towards this at this particular time. I don't. Mm -hmm. The website isn't active right now. Um, they're they're remodeling the website apparently <laughs> um but this is all um part of the key element it's one of the key element actions in the home is here uh the city of calgary's housing strategy um so part of this whole housing all we were talking about this yesterday on the podcast about the the cities making their bids and proposals to get some funding from the housing accelerator fund which was a five billion dollar if i believe correctly mm -hmm. um five billion dollar fund available from the federal government um cities are allowed to make a proposal an application to get some of that money um to help accelerate on um, this you know the housing and building more more units um calgary's proposal uh, which they you know called the city of calgary's housing strategy this this was part of their um their action plan was to offer these incentives for adding more secondary suites. But my assumption is, is that garage suites or, or garden suites weren't part of that action plan. So I think as more funding becomes available or once they see how many people apply for this mm -hmm. secondary suite incentive, uh, maybe they'll have a better understanding. But as you know, building a garage suite is significantly, it's going to si significantly more expensive, right? Yeah, true. 
Um, but I, I think it's fantastic. And, and part of this as well, when you do build these secondary suites, they, um, they'll add the secondary suite um, address to the registry. There's a registry in Calgary as well with all the secondary suites, right? Yeah, there's 13,000 homes registered to it at this moment. And there's a little map that you can click on it and it shows you where the legalized suites are. Which is great for tenants, right? Mm -hmm. For tenants to be able to go on there and, and to find out if it's an actual legal permitted secondary suite. Yes. Um, and you get a sticker to put in your window as well. A what? A window you get sticker. A sticker. You get a window sticker that says that this home has a secondary legal suite. Mm -hmm. You put it on your window. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. I had investors that went through it, and so I got to see the whole process, and I was like, ooh, a sticker. <laughs> you know what? I like that for um, for investors because it's mm -hmm. common for investors, um, new investors, who maybe don't quite understand how everything works to assume that there's a legal suite. Sometimes realtors don't really um, put proper descriptions on the listings and those types of things, and yeah. they get kind of tricked into buying illegal secondary suites. Um, right. And I like that it's like sticker in the front window. <laughs> like, yeah. This is permitted. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there's no, no getting around it. Um, but if they don't have a sticker, you can always look at um, the the website as well. You just take the address, you plug it in and it'll let you know if it, uh, if it's secondary suited or not legally. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, there's oh, there's always there's definitely always mm -hmm. ways to check, and you know, like in Edmonton, there's a a green sticker on the furnace downstairs with um you know secondary suite permit. Um, so there's there's ways to check, and you know, if it's if there's any ever ever any questions, you call the city and verify with them. But mm -hmm. some people just don't know, right? They don't know where to yeah. look. They don't know what they're looking for. Um, and so yeah, anything that makes it more obvious, I I like it. Yeah, so it's a uh, pretty neat, uh, definitely. So Nat, if, again, this mm -hmm. is only for homeowners, this is not for investors. So you have, to, it has to be your primary residence, correct? Mm, no. It doesn't actually clarify that. It says homeowners are responsible for the safety of the people living in their suite. Um, it doesn't actually clarify that. Uh, it just says the program will provide qualifying homeowners. So you just have to own the home. It doesn't say that you actually have to be living in it. Interesting. There's That's a bit of a gray area. You're right. Because I, I heard this as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so, it, And when I'm reading through everything, all it just keeps saying is that um, you have to, for the homeowner, it doesn't say anything about you need to be living in there. It has to be within the main dwelling. So as a homeowner in the main dwelling, not for backyard or detached suites. Hmm. It says <laughs> applications are limited to one per person and you must own the property through the entire part process. It doesn't say anything about you needing to live in the home. I guess the verbiage, the verbiage would be primary residence if if it was a requirement, right? Yeah, um, it would talk about it being your primary residence and you living in the home because a lot of people own homes, but they own like they rent out the detached, right? Like, say you have a detached home, but the basement's not developed, and you're renting out the top, but you own the home. You could then go in and develop the basement. <laughs> Wayne's well, skeptical. He's scouring the website. I just okay. want to make sure because I was under the understanding this is for homeowners like living primary within residence. as as your primary residence. Now the verbiage is is the way that it is on this website because they're mm -hmm. not going to say primary residence. They're not going to say investment property on this website because the majority of the people applying for this are not going to be investors, right? So they're just going to use normal okay. verbiage. Um, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I think we'll we'll probably find out real pretty quick once someone puts in an application. Once um, somebody puts in an application and tries to do it, and if they say, "Do you?" But I feel like the questions. I guess we can click the apply now and see what it says. That's what I was <laughs> uh, about to do. Yeah, I'm just trying to make. Yeah, sure it I'm says good. homeowner yeah. information, and then it asks for your. 
it says the incentive check will be mailed to this address. So it's not saying that it has to be home address is same as mailing address. Okay. And you, but you can put a different mailing address. So yeah, proposed suite location address is same as home address, or it could be a different. Yeah, no, you don't have to be living. You don't have to live in it. Oh, wow. That's, there you go. but only one per person. Yes. Person. Yeah. Only one per person. Okay, so let's work on loopholes. All right, let's work together. Let's do a little think tank here. Let's figure out how we can work around this. Um, Gabby, um, I'm going to buy the first one. And uh, and we're going to do a joint venture together. Mm -hmm. And then Gabby, you're going to buy the next one. You're going to be on title. And then I'm going to be joint venturing on with you. Mm -hmm. And then Nat, you grab the third one. And then we'll joint okay. venture on with you. Um, okay. So I, one would assume that though it is limited to one person, it would be limited to the title holder. Yes. Yes. So if you have multiple joint venture partners, you could continue to do this, continue to benefit from this program. Yeah. Just do like a round robin of who's holding the mortgage <laughs> with your joint ventures. Is that what you're saying? That's what it sounds like. I'm just saying. I may have just saved a lot of people a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm taking donations. Yeah. I, um, I love that you asked that question, though, because a lot of people would have been confused by the verbiage. And honestly, yeah. this, the minute I clicked on the now, it everywhere just says, is it the same as the, is your mailing address the same as the property? No? Okay, click this okay. button. <laughs> click this button. So as you're going through, it's just a bunch of different buttons that you need to click. So... To me, it looks like you don't actually have to live in the property. You just have to own the property. You have to be the homeowner to apply for this. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is um, this is pretty cool. And I think that this is going to be a great opportunity for those that are quote unquote trying to legalize secondary mm -hmm. suites. Um, if you're starting from scratch, bare bones, you know, starting from the studs or starting from the, the concrete walls. I don't think, I mean, $10,000 is a small dent in a $70,000 renovation, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for those that already sort of have stuff done and all you need is new ventilation, you know, interconnected smoke detectors, egress windows, that type of stuff. Um, legalizing it, this is going to put, this is going to be a big chunk of the cost of legalizing uh, a right. secondary. Um, and, a, and in here, if you read, sorry to cut you off, if you read, it says if you're updating it. So even if it's older, so say it's art, you already have it, but it's like older and you want to update it, you can let them know that you're updating it from this to this. Um, and you, you, you still qualify as well. Okay. Well, that's, um, this has all been very interesting. Not what I was expecting. Gabby. Yeah. I like it. It's got, it, you can, t you can tell now when you, when you hear me slowing down, that's just because I'm thinking while processing. I'm talking. Yeah. I'm processing it because I'm trying to think of opportunities for this. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, $10,000 savings uh, on a $70,000 renovation is helpful but you know these days with the costs in calgary it is making it a little bit more difficult to find opportunities like that right where the numbers still work yeah if you're starting from a blank basement definitely right so but if you're, yeah for investors that are considering utilizing and 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 leveraging this incentive program what types of properties do you recommend for someone who's never doesn't know anything about secondary suites? Someone doesn't know anything about Calgary. What types of properties do you think would uh, would be best for this? Um, I feel like a partially finished basement could also work as long as the safety elements of it are haven't been updated. Um, so looking at obviously bungalows, by levels, um, semi detached as well. Um, anything that already has that entrance where you just have to block off top and bottom um, are going to be ones that you're going to want to look at uh, illegal suites that are already in place so that you can just basically take it from illegal update the safety elements have the inspector come in and then legalize it um, again the ones that work the best i have seen it done on like two-story homes and stuff like that but it's going to take a lot of different configurations <laughs> unless there's already a separate entrance. So I would stick to, you know, uh, semi-detached 
or a bungalow style or a bi-level style. Um, okay. Partially finished would be really good because you, at, that way at least you know maybe they didn't do some of the safety elements. Um, mm -hmm. So you can maximize the $10,000, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, or older, suited. And that was a good point about the two-story uh, thing as well. I've seen some people like, yeah, well, I can just add some stairs, you know, on the exterior to the upstairs unit. The downstairs can be its own unit. It'd be about the same as doing a bungalow with a basement. And then it'd be great because all the tenants will be above ground and they have sunlight and stuff. It's it's always more complicated than you think. It's it's really expensive, especially like mm -hmm. the plumbing alone. You know what I mean? And renavigating that and just it's... Yeah, it's 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 too much. But um, as you said, bungalows with the with the side or the back entrance, separate entrance are typically the easiest because they've yes. already got the separate entrance. Um, typically, you want to make sure that they got at least a few decent sized windows downstairs uh, yes. for the bedrooms and also for um, a living room area. So it's not too, too dark. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, like you said, a a, a basement that's already finished or a basement that already has a non-conforming secondary suite is going to be best um, because it would just be as easy as going in and adding the safety devices that are required by the city, which is what they're offering in this incentive program to bring mm -hmm. it up to code and then to get that legal, um, that sticker in the window and that sticker on the furnace. So that way um, you can get it registered and then the, the 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 great the best part about all of this guys and 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 don't discount this is that typically the value the cost sorry the value of the property afterwards is significantly more it goes up a significantly more in value than the actual cost of the renovations because these types of properties are very high in demand right yes so story i sold one back in february um and they bought it off market for under four and then we sold it for 570 and that's what they did they just brought it up to grade it was an illegally rate it was an illegally suited um a bungalow but it was like a it was raised it was a raised bungalow mm -hmm. and that worked really well so like the basement was it was a lot brighter the windows were a lot bigger <laughs> um mm -hmm. so yeah it worked out really well and that's what they did literally this i wish this in they would have had this incentive program so they could have utilized it <laughs> right mm -hmm. right yeah so when it comes to finding properties like this where the numbers are going to work because it all comes down to the numbers as well guys and and we're out of time for today but i just want to make sure that everybody understands that when it, when when you're looking for a property it's not just about finding a bungalow and right. spending fifty thousand dollars in the basement and suddenly going to be worth a lot more uh, the market is the market and it's the value of your property is going to be equal to whatever other properties have sold for recently in the area that are the same. So you got to make sure that you're buying at the right price. You're renovating it for, you know, uh, as low as possible as far as Costco and understanding what the value is going to be afterwards to know if it's a good mm -hmm. deal. So that's why having someone, you know, on your power team like Natherine, who can help you out figuring that stuff out, help you out finding those properties and helping you do the comparative market analysis to determine what the after repair value is going to be, uh, is incredibly valuable, incredibly valuable. Don't get stuck buying a property and doing the work and finding out that it's worth less than what you thought it was going to be or you're underwater. Uh, additionally, uh, a great way to find um, properties at the right price is obviously utilizing wholesaling companies as well, right? Correct. Definitely reach out to and ask your realtor if they have somebody in their network, if they're, uh, if they have a wholesaler or no wholesaler, um, that's the best time to, um, best way to get off market properties. And again, so that it saves you from doing the work. And they're arguably the second most important person on your power team. Yes, arguably, <laughs> definitely. The wholesaler right go hand in realtor. hand with the realtor. Yep. <laughs> right behind it <laughs> you're welcome man <laughs> I, I i think a good um a good honorable realtor is going to respect that and understanding that at the end of the day yes i mean a realtor is going to be like oh i hate wholesalers they take all my business but oh, no. it's a good realtor is going to know mm -hmm. what's best for their clients and yeah. 
purchasing a property on the MLS because th that's how they're going to get their fee or that's how they're going to get paid just for them. Um, but causing uh, their client to overpay and then potentially be underwater, it's just, it's not good business. And yeah. I think a good realtor like yourself can, can agree that there will be more business in the future when you go to sell that property, right? Yep. Yeah. And so it's all just about making sure the client gets what it is that they need. Um, and uh, thankfully, we've got a really great uh, wholesaler, uh, wholesaling company on tomorrow on the show on Thursday, uh, who happens to be married to Natherine Leger. Uh, and that's, that's, and uh, happy anniversary to you guys. Oh, yeah. Hey, happy anniversary. Yeah, yeah it was yesterday. Um, so tomorrow, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and the opportunities uh, that are available. And maybe you can reach out to Legere home buyers and let them know, hey, I heard about this new program in Calgary. I really want to take advantage of it. Here's the types of properties I'm looking for. Um, and it doesn't mean that there isn't properties on the MLS as well, right? But just right. understand yeah. that there are lots of different options available and it's it, you got to look everywhere, right? These, mm -hmm. I, I tell you guys, if, you're, if you think that you can just go on realtor.ca today and find one that fits, you're going to be a little disappointed, right? Yeah. Opportunities, they they are they come and they go, and you got to be able to jump on them quickly. So set up your team right, set up your power team, let them know what it is you're looking for, and um, and lean on their advice and their guidance um, um, as you make your decisions. Well, thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us today, Nat. That was uh, very informative. So lots of information for Calgary investor folks. I learned homeowners. a ton. Yeah. I learned a ton. Yeah. So thanks. Thanks for bringing all that information. You guys are very welcome. All right. That wraps up today's show, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks for listening. Want to be coached personally by Wayne and Gabby? Then you should join the Real Estate Investing Master's Mentorship Program. Details are in the show notes to get started.